All right, this is going to be the second in our ongoing series, uh, and I am using all the fellow movie mainliners as my guinea pigs, and then hopefully we'll get some listeners out there to uh, be participants as well. I'm thinking maybe someone like Andrew Martin or William Lindis. Anyway, maybe. what we're doing is... Maybe. <laughs> We are getting uh, impact. My nephew, Brandon. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We're getting uh, memorable, impactful, unique, movie-going experiences that we have had. And today we have the one and only Eric Holmes. What you got? Yes. Well, um, my um, mine's kind of a cheat. Because it's not a, a you say movie going, you think movie theater. And uh, back in the day, uh, my friends, uh, Matt and Aaron, this was back in Omaha, they would have a movie night. They call it Splatter House. And they would set up their living room uh, like a projection or a movie theater, set up all the couches, you know, one behind the other, and project movies on the uh, wall. You typically, Typically horror, but always genre. You know. Splatterhouse, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, Splatterhouse, kind of. Yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> the name says it all. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, you know, just that that group of people and those times going there, you know, sharing the double feature movie night with someone like that, or with people like that, um, was in itself special. But there was one movie in particular that they played. And it had a uh, had a bit of a uh, it touched us in a certain sort of way, <laughs> and then I, you know, I'll get into that. the The movie's called uh, August Underground, and there's three of them, but specifically the first one that we saw because that was the one that was most shocking to us. Because uh, uh, a lot of times, Aaron was the one that would would. Uh, pick the movie sometimes matt did or sometimes each of them picked the movie but if i'm i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure aaron picked this one a lot of times he'll just grab random movies he's never seen we're gonna play it and see how it goes and he picked the august underground ones and we're watching the movie now had he seen it before or was it new to him too i don't know okay i'm guessing it might have been i think he might have heard of it and then uh that that got him to want to play it there um, but no oh shit. Let me get rid of this. <laughs> That's fine. I can just I can do a little cut there if we need to. All right, let me get the uh, notifications off here. All right, so um, anywho, we're back. A couple of dings, or maybe just leave it in. It doesn't really matter. Point okay. being is, we saw we were watching uh, August Underground, and the movie. If you've never seen it, they're not good movies by normal standards. Uh, they're shot on VHS tape, like a VHS tape camera. So it's real low quality and there's not much of a story to it. It's just people going around with cameras fucking around. And then the cameras go in like a basement or somewhere where someone's tied up and they're all bloody. And then the rest of it is just like them videotaping themselves, torturing someone. And so that, that low fi recording and low fi quality match with the, very very well done gore effects we all thought we were watching a snuff film oh, no. <laughs> so like towards the end of the movie it's like hey, i'm gonna step out for a cigarette and go out you know it, yeah you know me too and i'll, I'll go out for a cigarette too. <laughs> next thing you know all of us are outside even the people that don't smoke are outside smoking just like what the fuck is this is this a fucking <laughs> snuff film <laughs> Like, I don't know. I don't know. And so we finished the movie, uh, you know, too much to our chagrins. We finished the movie. And then the first thing we wanted to do instead of playing the next movie is like, put those fucking special features on now. <laughs> yeah. Let's just see the actual special effects and make sure they are special so effects. We, we put on the special features, saw the behind the scenes stuff. And we're like, oh, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. And I guess I, I guess that speaks to uh, a lot of people are like, uh, oh, you're into horror movies, therefore, right. a, a lot of people might mistakenly make that jump. You're into horror movies, therefore, you like violence, and that's that perfectly illustrates how that is absolutely not the case. I love watching people die on screen as much as the next person, but if that real person 
if that person on the screen is actually a real innocent person being victimized or hurt, that's not something I want to see. That's not why I go exactly. watch horror movies. Um, now that, but, that actually brings me to something real quick. Um, so that kind of accentuates the modern or fairly modern movie going experience because you could do that. But you think about the people that saw something like um, a, a cannibal Holocaust in yeah. a movie theater before videotapes or right when the videotapes were starting and they, they would have to just sit with that. No idea. <laughs> no idea. It's like, ah, uh, is that what fake? Is it watch? real? Turns out, I guess, or, or, well, was that the real one or was it Cannibal Ferox? It was a, well, Cannibal Holocaust was the one that had the real animal killings, but then they got, okay. like, they all got um, charged, I think, in Italy for other stuff because yeah. they, people believed that some of the stuff was real that wasn't the animal stuff. Yeah. And they had to prove, they had to do kind of what you said. They had to prove that there were special effects to the court. Oh, okay. I, I didn't think it was the animal thing. I thought it was the people thing. Well, the people I, thing I get, what they had to prove. The Italians yeah. didn't care about the animals. <laughs> yeah. know, they didn't care about that. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, well, yeah, Hannibal, uh, Hannibal, Cannibal Ferox and Cannibal Holocaust. I always, I got both, because I saw them both once and I got both those mixed up in my head as the same movie pretty much. But yeah, the August Undergrounds, the uh, I uh, kind of like uh, when we did the uh, story of the Kelly Gang. Mm-hmm. I would check those out as a uh, curiosity. I definitely for a showcase of really great, uh, you know, gore effects. Uh, the movies probably not going to get much of them out of them as movies, but I mean, we definitely got a experience for sure. Because, as they said, we're like, we're fucking, we're literally watching a snuff film. I can't, I can't do this anymore. Um, yeah. But I, I, I don't know that the uh, if the makers ever watch this, I don't know that they'll be pleased to hear me say that as a movie, it's not good. But I think they would be very pleased. I think it was. I think it's high praise on the level of uh, artistry behind their effects. Honestly, I think up. that's probably more what they're going for than the, the quality rating. Uh, I think that if, if they thought that people thought it was real, yeah. I mean, that's probably a number one to them. If people thought yeah. it was a good movie too, I mean, I guess that would be a bonus. And you, know, and you know, to the point, I guess uh, with the artistry, I was wrong. I mean, that's, if that's what they were going for, fucking hit the nail on the head. Yeah, it's always so that. It, if anyone in toe tag is watching this, I will have you know, you had a room full of horror fans discuss it and had to walk away because we thought it was an actual snuff film. So you guys exactly. did it. You guys nailed it. That was right in the era, too, if I remember correctly, when that kind of thing could kind of happen. Was that like late 90s, early 1000s, somewhere in that range? Uh, around 2000s, uh, mid 2000s, I guess. And that's when even people were believing things like the uh, Blair Witch Project. Because it had that, all of that background stuff that they put on the internet. It was like one of the first internet things. Oh yeah, the, the yeah with the well with the Blair Witch Project. Uh, my friend had a VHS tape that they put in with the the dot quote documentary, documentary of the Blair yeah. Witch, and they played it and we're watching. It's like oh, yeah, it's a bunch of bullshit because it was they didn't get into it. They just set up the story, and then the and then the uh, Blair Witch Project comes out. And we're like, oh, hey, they, they got a movie based on that that thing we saw a year ago or however long ago it was. Let's go watch that. And we're watching <laughs> Blair Witch Project. And, you know, it's just, it's the, uh, like, you know, but it's normal today now, the, uh, the, found, the footage. found footage yeah. thing. You know, it's kind of played, definitely played out, except for a capture kill release, which is also a wonderful. But, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, they were like, hey, they, they're making a movie of that thing that we saw, and then we're watching it, and then people are dying, and we're like, whose parents would sign off on this? Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't know if you ever if you ever did at the time, like, I was pretty early adopter of internet, so I had internet at that point, and I remember yeah. um, the website, they had a website too, and they had it all done up like an actual kind of news story-ish website. They had photos of like the uh, the film canisters that were all like decrepit that had been dug up yeah. and all that stuff was on there. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. I don't, uh, well, I would say that you couldn't, you couldn't trick people like that nowadays. And I say trick is a, not as a pejorative. Cause I do like that. Um, 
when when a when a movie can just completely you know pull the pull the carpet out from under me, I love it because but I you, love that experience of it. But you know how they trick people nowadays. The the version of this that happens now is these online. You do it with fake news. CNN well, does like, it yeah, every day. <laughs> But there's these, all these online, um, like web, they call them almost like web reality games. I think something like that. Have you ever heard of all yeah. these where there'll be these, these like random websites that'll show up and they'll have these weird videos and, and footage and people will think that it's a real, like, like the footage. Momoa thing or Mo, Moma yeah. or whatever, whatever that thing is. Yeah. A lot of people thought that was real. It's like, Oh, they'll have a kid's thing and then a kid's video. And then in the middle of it, this thing will pop up and turns out it was bullshit. So, so yeah, yeah. The that, yeah, there, there's definitely ways you could do that. I don't know. There, there's this, uh, and this is going to get into a whole another thing, but just like a bunch of stuff that used to work back in the day that doesn't really apply to the, today. Uh, waiting in line for movie tickets, for example. Right. That doesn't happen anymore because you buy everything online. So not that waiting in line is a fun thing to do, but it, it you know, you're sitting in line with other nerds such as yourselves and then. You get to you know talk to them, hey we're gonna watch this Star Wars or hey you we're gonna watch this whatever it is we're gonna watch, and then that whole time we're waiting in line it's 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 not so much about watching the movie ahead of other people although that's part of it I think it's more of the the community and just uh, hanging out with people like minded yes and then, absolutely and and then just spending that time with them just you know just typing up you know. Something similar, which is kind of lost now too, is the whole midnight movie experience. So I remember yeah. going and seeing, um, I guess the one's most memorable to me, and it's very similar in the fact that you couldn't get this anymore because there's a videotape or DVD, and there's multiple ways to see them ahead of time. At those times, the more extreme cinema would you know, maybe barely play in real theaters at all, and then it would just get relegated to a midnight showing. So like maybe yeah. Friday or Saturday. And I don't know if you've ever seen any midnight showings back in those days. Yeah, I remember going and seeing Dawn of the Dead like back in oh not not that far back but yeah, yeah i'm talking like dawn of the dead like in 19 i don't know was it 80 or 1979 and it would be like yeah. midnight on a friday and if you wanted to see dawn of the dead that's it that's the way you get to see it and i remember going in there and seeing it and i'm sure you've seen it where once they go through that whole tenement building and all that stuff goes down in the first like i don't know 15 minutes of dawn of the dead half yeah. of the crowd had walked half of the crowd had just walked out of there <laughs> and that's the same kind of thing where you can't quite have that experience hardly at all anymore because unless it's only been in the theaters so far, people have had a chance to see it or not see it or whatever. Yeah. They're not going to go to the theater, pay their money and then like get into it and go like, Oh my gosh, I can't do this. You know, and go out of there. Unless it's uh unless it's uh like the Jerry Lewis uh, clown movie that no one's allowed to watch or the, the John Malkovich 300 or hundred years that no one's going to watch for another hundred years. Right, right, right. All right. Well, in which case, good. no one will see it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> cybernetic yeah. forms. Yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. Well, thank you. I'm gonna thank you. Uh, we'll sign off on the second version of our movie mainline memories. I don't know what we're gonna call it. We'll figure out something for it. Uh, Hello, you listening to mainline memories <laughs> with Bruce and Eric. Right <laughs>